weeks now, I've been having project managers reaching out to me and asking me about my opinions on AI and project management. And to be honest with you, I haven't had the time, but that's changed now, either through a sense of self-preservation or just my conscience kicking in. And I can see that AI is gonna change everything in the world around us. So why not affect project management as well? I've arranged a call with Andy Kaufman to find out what will AI mean for project managers? Will it be a threat or an opportunity? I keep getting asked by people who are interested in project management, who have careers in project management, what AI means to them, what it means to the project management profession, what it means to their careers, what are the, the benefits and the opportunities, and what are the threats? What, what does a project manager need to know about AI? But you know, uh, this was two, three years ago, I had read a headline that some about AI in a project management tool. And I went just to see like, what is AI in a project management tool? And it had all this stuff. If you looked at the press, like the, the what it was saying, it was uh, predictive analytics and it had, it had every buzzword except uh, sustainability. <laughs> the more I looked at it, all it was, was, was like earned value. And it, it, it just, it had a lot of the calculations in it. It wasn't really, you know, AI in any sense or definition that I had learned about AI. So I, I've been a little skeptical about any references to to AI with project management, of what does that really mean? So a lot of has changed in this last year. And a lot of the articles that come out say how this is gonna revolutionize project management. And I think there's a chance for some of it, but it, it, the articles will often talk, you know, Stuart about, uh, uh, it'll, you know, it'll analyze big data, look for patterns and trends, uh, help make decisions. And as I, I mean, I'm, every day I'm with project managers and they're not right now, most of them dealing with that. What most of them are dealing with is how do I deal with this difficult stakeholder? <laughs> how do I better understand the requirements? How do I uh, facilitate a risk management session better? It's a lot of the stuff that you publish at, you know, videos on that they really are concerned about. And so as I've been spending time, myself, I've taken a bunch of classes. I've done a lot of reading. I'm using AI every day now. I, I'm like, I, as I learn things, I'll pass by people like, are you doing this? And they're like, no, I'm just, I'm just too busy. Kind of like you said, right? I'm just too busy to do it. And I kind of know I should. So I put together a course that says, here are use cases, not about the future, not about when you have big data is going to go through patterns and, and look at these analytics and make decisions for you as a project manager. It's not that. The use cases are more along the lines of, I've got to write an email to somebody and I'm not sure how to say it because it's kind of sensitive. And going and talking to the person face-to-face -face maybe isn't an option, but how could I say this? Or a use case on, I am making a decision. Here's some options that I'm considering. Review the options. Give me some pros and cons. So it's it, the way I'm looking at AI now, Stuart, and the way I recommend to everybody in our community is to think of it as an assistant or an intern that you can bounce ideas off or an executive coach that you can bounce ideas off of. And if I pass something by an intern and they don't do a perfect job at it, I don't go bad intern. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, they're an intern, you know, but it, it, it's, it's a sounding board. And what I'm finding is the tools are amazing soundboards, you know, sounding board. They, they just, you can pass scenarios by them. I've never, to my knowledge, I've never taken anything as is and just said, oh, that's what ChatGPT said, or that's what uh, Poe or Bing Chat said. I'm not taking it verbatim, but here's just one, one quick scenario. And then see what questions come to your mind, sir. But I, I, I got an email from a leader at the UN of all places. I just taught a class and he had a follow-up question. And I, I was really short on time. <laughs> and I thought, I really, I want to give this, I want to give a good answer, but I'm short on time. I, I took the question almost as is and put a, a prompt around it and just had chat GPT. Give me, give me a, a response. It was a, Pretty good response. Uh, and it was along the lines of something that I would have said. I didn't take it as is. I made some changes. I sent it. And the person's like, 
brilliant. <laughs> Thanks for the quick turnaround. It took me five minutes where it probably would have taken me a half hour to come up with something that, and who knows, maybe in a half hour I would have come up with something even better, but it was sufficient and timely and thoughtful. And, and it, so it's things like that that are saving, that can save project managers time. I can appreciate the time saving element of having answers at your fingertips in that kind of way. Somewhat like an enhanced search tool, I guess, you know, it's a little bit more creative perhaps. I guess one of the things that I've always felt has been a problem with so much accessible, searchable information out there is that we no longer learn. We get this habit instead to just Google it and is there a chance that this could end up go taking that bad behavior to the next level and we could end up, uh, I don't know, not maybe not stupider, but <laughs> you know, less informed. It's a very valid question because I, I don't know if this happens to you, but I feel like before using map apps when I'm driving, I had, oh, I felt like homing pigeon uh, awareness of where I was at and directions. And I feel like the more I use the apps, the more I'm not quite as aware of where I'm at. And so I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a valid concern. The, I think a counter to it is that if we think of it as a sounding board or an assistant or a, you know, something to save time, it's not reducing my thinking in fact, I think in some ways it's expanding it, you know, because if I do a, if I use a search engine, which we're, most of us are used to the search engine model, you put in a short query, you get a response, but you go to these different websites and they all have their own take on certain things. Right? But what you can do with these tools is a much more customized query. So you can be thoughtful about the query and then based on the response, send up a follow-up query. And it's almost like having a conversation. So I like to think of every time I have a conversation with you, I'm, I'm not getting dumber. I'm not gonna be like, well, he knows it. So I don't need to know it. I actually feel like it's, <laughs> it's like iron sharpens iron, right? Like we, we get to know each other. We get to bounce ideas off of. And so with that mental model of what the tool is, I think it can actually be something that increases learning. So instead of just outsourcing it, it's, it's, it's to, together sourcing, you know, co-sourcing, something like that. Yeah, it sounds more collaborative, doesn't it, than maybe just doing a just a simple search. For a, a project manager then, what would the big threat be from this tool? Is it going to come along and replace project managers or is the do do humans and will humans always have the edge in that situation? Yeah, it's a it's a great question and you know, it's interesting. I've had the opportunity to interview some futurists. And what I, one of the things I found is futurists don't predict the future, <laughs> ironically. What, what they do is they create a set of assumptions and then play out with those assumptions, what would the future look like if that's true? And so here's, here's how I feel about that, Stuart, is a, a common phrase now that I think is worth reflecting on is that AI won't take your job, someone using AI will take your job, all right? Now, I don't think that's actually even a true statement, but I will say that when people, you know, if someone has access, like, for example, do you, do you know, like when you, like, you know, Excel really well, the fact that you know, Excel really well gives you a competitive edge over people who don't know Excel, you know? And so when you learn to use the tools, it does give you a competitive edge. And the reason why I, I think it's, I think it's a while before AI is going to replace any project managers, because like I said before, the most difficult part of our job isn't typically the reporting aspect. It's not typically that aspect. It's the relationship building, the stakeholder management, and those, it's going to be a long time before, you know, R2-D2 is going to, you know, take over, or maybe it'd be more like C3PO is going to take over for us there. I, I think, I think we're, we're safe in that regard, but I honestly do believe that if someone just kind of blows this off and they don't, take advantage of the learning, they're not going to understand what it can do and what it can't do. And they'll either live in fear that they're going to lose their job because of it. Or, or, and they'll start believing the pundits that I think are more along the lines of, you know, uh, IBM's not, you know, they're going to forego hiring of 8,000 people because of AI and they'll, they'll be fearful about it. Or I was talking to somebody recently who just says, I don't need to know it. I, it wasn't fear. It's just, I, I just know everything I need to know. And, 
that's probably not a good position to be in ever. So uh, I, I honestly think these are tools that can help us be more effective as project managers, save us time, uh, you know, not, not be, not, not to worry about it being a replacement. I think it's much more the assistant, the intern, you know, that sort of model. So tell me a little bit more about the course that you've created then. Yeah. Uh, this is for, is this for project managers specifically who are interested in AI or is there a wider audience? You know, this? the way we're positioning it is for project managers and other leaders, because, you know, there's things to it. I mean, I teach project management almost every day at companies and most of the people who attend don't have the title project manager. <laughs> you know? So they have other titles, but that's not their title. And so there are, there are people in leadership roles. In fact, you could argue that almost everybody's a project manager to some degree, right? We have to, we have to hit dates and we have to deliver. So it's targeted toward people who lead projects and lead teams is, is the, is the target group. And, and it's, it's not about, it's not about, you know, use cases for in the future. It's about very practical things that we have to do on the daily basis, like make decisions. I'm trying to think about this, or I've got one use case in it. That is, um, here's an idea I'm thinking about. Uh, basically it's rip into this idea as if you were Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. <laughs> and, and so what the AI does is based on its knowledge of the writing from those three people, what have they said about these sorts of ideas? And the prompt even specifically says, don't make me feel good. <laughs> you know, like, you know, rip into the ideas. So, so there's, there's that. Here, here's just a real practical one. Uh, sometime if I lead a, a Zoom meeting, and let's say it's a, a decent sized group of people, Zoom, though at least the version that I use, doesn't have a registration feature. I could use the registration feature, but I just want to draw out of the, the chat log who participated, who participated the most. It, it, you know, so it's a simple prompt that pulls out, it reads the chat log, pulls out the names, sorts it alphabetically. It just saves me time. You know? and, uh, there's, there's, so it's, it's use cases that project managers or team leaders or people – that, that have to do things like that, that they can use these tools. And it introduces to more than just ChatGPT, although ChatGPT gets most of the press. I'm telling you, I have never been a Bing advocate. I've never, Bing is leading the way right now. And, and I'm, I'm sure it'll really? change. I'm sure Google will do their everything they can to catch up. But there's a, a tool called Poe, P-O-E. Very few people know about it, but Poe is amazing. At least the, the paid version has access to some stuff. that So there's all kinds of tools. So the, the course walks people through how to sign up for these, how to do it for free, uh, specific prompts to use, but then a lot of experimentation. So it's not listening, it's not listening to me. It is, uh, here's some things to do. Now go experiment. And what did you do? And it's very interactive in that regard. They post responses. I get back to them. And so yeah, the feedback's been great. It's, and it's been fun to see people go, now I see what it can do. Yeah. So a practical course. That's that's pretty good rather than <laughs> being lectured to. Uh, what's the duration of the course? How long does it last for? Well, it's a very good question because when I do it live, so I'll do it live with uh, customers in-house, it's about three hours long when I do it live. But the self-guided, one of the things that I strongly encourage people to do is not just do the lesson, it's like now take time, modify that prompt, experiment. And so someone who uh, they just started the course today, they said they have, she's, she's the maid of honor at upcoming wedding. And she used it to come up with some ideas for her speech at the reception of the wedding. And so, I mean, that's not one of my use cases, but she's experimenting with it. So it could be a matter of, of, I mean, if you, if you just did it straight through three hours, I would be much happier if someone did it in eight hours over the course of many weeks, you know, and just chip away at it. But our, our, our desire is to spark experimentation because one, once, once you start on this, Stuart, you will be like, why didn't I get started earlier? You know, that's, it really is one of those things. Okay. That sounds excited. Um, and where do, where do people go to, to find this? Yeah. Well, they can use the link that you'll provide, or it's also at AI.peopleandprojectspodcast.com. 
So if you go to ai.peopleandprojectspodcast.com, that'll take you uh, directly to the site, to the landing page. People can explore it. We purposely keep the price really low. We This is one of those things that it, it's just because I know two years from now, things will have changed so much, you know, Six months from now, things have changed so much. So we're, we're updating the course, but it's like, get access to it now. Don't let price be an issue. And so that's, uh, make sure to use the coupon code that is, uh, that is available in your show notes as well. <laughs>